There was a time I used to be a huge Sousa fan. Her face that lasted less longer than my Edgewood face. A face that also added. But back on topic. I loved classic Simpsons, while modern Simpsons at the time were still. A few years have passed. I am now a casual fan. I hear the modern seasons have actually gotten better, but I don't watch it as much as I used to. But one thing that stayed the same is me trying out a bunch of Simpsons games. I played Hit and Run, the Simpsons game, which was what I grew up with before I ever cared about the show. It's actually on the way that I should check it out someday. I never tried it, but my brother tried Road Rage. I tried Tapped Out, but I dropped it because, quite frankly, it's boring. Quite the opposite for the Simpsons arcade game which I also play. One thing you notice about early Simpsons games is how much attention Bart got. He was practically slapped on anything because he was as popular as Michael Jackson. But I'm here to talk about the two SNES games. Bart's Nightmares released in 1992 and Virtual Bart released in 1994. Virtual My Life. Both were published by Acclaim, but we're gonna start off with Bart's Nightmares. I think I'm about to have the nightmares. In Bart's Nightmares, Bart is doing his exam when he falls asleep during the day. What, did he not sleep well? Did he drink the caffeinated coffee? Who the hell falls asleep during the day? Anyway, day becomes night as Bart's paper is flown out the window. Why is his window open? So like typical Bart fashion, he jumps out of the window and he falls into Springfield. What the hell happened to their backyard? What, what, why is he in Springfield? This is the game's main hub world, filled with multiple autos driving a bus way too fast. Killer mailboxes. Don't you love nonsensical logic? <coughs> Bar controls like other s. Well, I mean, you can jump, but there's no animation and it makes a goofy sound. You can spit watermelon seeds and blow bubble gum. I have yet to find a purpose for either of those. But outside of the first two enemies I mentioned, there's also a fairy Lisa, which there can be more than one of for some reason, and she turns you into a frog, which makes Bart a lot more slower than he already is. To break the curse, you need to be cursed by the crazy cat lady. If you get cursed by her when you're in a normal state, Bart just kinda spits, but it looks more like he's doing all gross. But it's also out of character for the cat lady, because she's into cats, not kissing random strangers on the streets. But anyway, sometimes you'll find these people that you need to jump into and do nothing else I found out the hard way oh and you want to know how much I hate this hub world well you can die yeah you can die and just straight up get an F good hub world once you manage to get inside the paper you'll be able to choose between two doors it doesn't really matter because the mini games behind both of them are always random actually let's talk about the mini games Bartman one of the only stages that actually feel like a game? Wow, unfortunately this one sucks. You see, in this one, everyone is out to get you. Whether it be the missiles, paper airplane, the multiple copies of Nelson, or some of the bosses you face. The first two I go through with no problems, even though they keep killing me. But then Smithers appears, and he deals more health, why? And then they are those goddamn green clouds. But at least the music is pretty catchy.
And then Mr. Burns is even more challenging. But let's move on. The next one I'll be talking about is about popping <laughs> the dog style in Bart's body. The goal is that so much to pop as many enemies as possible as it is to get those oddly specific season 1 reference that say Hi there! And that's really it. It's not really too difficult or anything. The only thing that I'm in trouble is one of the horned <laughs> that will aim at you but they don't really damage you. That can hurt you and make you lose your life the ones that throw bars but those are so easy to dodge that yeah next one is the itchy and scratchy stages remember that halloween special where bart and lisa ended up in itchy and scratchy and itchy and scratchy tried to kill them it's basically that but only for bart and they are ruthless it doesn't help that their hitboxes are pretty dodgy but now you gotta deal with other stuff too like never running out of light bulbs lamps or vacuums death vacuums it also also doesn't help that in this one you die in one hit next up bart zilla incredibly lame pun aside this is a level where you don't actually move bart instead you just make him destroy the city except it's awkward because you can only fire and shoot lasers in three directions. Wow, they managed to make something that seemed so cool so lame. Wow. This one has a second part though where you climb up a really really tall building and this one might be worse than the first part because well people are throwing stuff at you and you can't really see up ahead leading to you constantly going down because of the objects being thrown at once you reach the top however you'll be greeted by homer kong who throws objects at you like all the other people but once you reach him he turns back into homer and you get the page and finally, the most confusing one, Indiana Jones. Okay, so in this one, you go on a bunch of blocks, but make sure not to go on the one that's too low. Also make sure to dodge Maggie's pacifier, also dodge the, well not dodge, kill the red demon, but dodge the blue ones, and just like that, you've beaten Bart's nightmare. Well, depending on how much paper you could have gotten, it depends on the grade you got. But, who cares? Does it really matter? So, as you can tell, Bart's Nightmare isn't very good. So, let's talk about the next one, and pray to God it's better than Bart's Nightmare. Although, I doubt very much. Here is Virtual Bart. It's about as virtual as that new meta thing. That means it isn't. I remember. Well, you see, the story this time is that a science fair is happening and Martin Prince presents a virtual reality device that displays six educational exhibitions. However, Bart causes the device to malfunction and gets trapped in it. Bart must complete the six programs to escape the machine or else he's trapped inside forever. That's stupid. So let's start off with the pig level. Your goal here is be 
a pig and set all the other pigs free without dying or being eaten. You, know, you have the usual platforming moves, but you also have this move that reminds me of Uncle Scrooge from DuckTales NES where you can bounce bounce attack. Doing it is kind of wonky though, and sometimes I downright miss the enemies. But a bigger concern is the fact that the stages are ginormous, gigantic, too big. They are way too big. Meaning, yes, you can get lost. All of that while you're also being on the time limit. Next up, the water slide. It is way too fast paced and although I heard through some research that there is a guy who points you where you're supposed to go and I did see him but it went way too fast to see where he was pointing and sometimes a bad guy can be stuck making you kinda go back. Is it? Is that a reference to that time Homer got stuck in a slide? So, was it really fun? I ended up falling off the canyon. Next up, baby platforming. You see, in this one, not only can you jump, but you can also swing around and stand on branches. I'll be honest, I didn't manage to get around far enough in this one because Bar is very slippery. The bird enemies are also annoying, and sometimes when you want to get somewhere, they just happen to be in the way and you end up taking damage. And then sometimes a platform is just a little bit out of your reach, but you think you're gonna make it, except you don't. Baby Bart can enjoy playing in the dirt for all I care. Class photo. This one is all about timing. And it's not that hard to get a hang of, although what I find annoying is the fact that the game pretty much aims at whoever, and that can kind of be annoying. There is a second part where you throw eggs, but yeah. Dino part, a dino platformer where you can't get to kill enemies because it's really janky and not fun. They also relentlessly attack you, and that's just no fun, is it? Finally, we have a level that takes place in the future. That sounds cool, that really sounds cool, and it even uses mode 7, but it's not that big. The controls are stiff, the mode 7 is more of a disadvantage to where you're going, the enemies are that sick and sane. And I don't know how I feel about the perspective of seeing where it's right, there. wasted potential overall. In terms of future-esque stuff, nobody can top Futurama. But that was both of the Simpsons games on SNES. There are way more, but I don't feel like play playing them. So, they were both awful. There was a better Simpsons game at the time, Simpsons Arcade game, but there were better games made later, like The Simpsons Hit and Run, The Simpsons, um, The Simpsons Game, Road Rage, you name it. It's so weird, they could have just put it The Simpsons Arcade game to SNES, or even Genesis, but they just didn't. I mean, they put it the TMNT arcade games to consoles, so why couldn't they do the same thing for the Simpsons arcade game? It's baffling and makes no sense. But this was Joseph and I'll see you guys next time.